Hi, welcome to the Mathematic Channel. Today we look at solving x plus y equals 6 and x times y equals 6. This looks tricky. Watch the video, like and subscribe. Let's jump right in. So the first thing to do when you see an equation like this is to put nice brackets around it and label the first one as equation 1 and the second one as equation 2 and this will be how we deal with simultaneous equations. Now from equation two, so if we could take the second equation, so from the second equation, what we can do is we can find a value for x or a value for y, so maybe we can say x is equal to six divided by y. And so we can substitute this equation back into the first equation, so we can say in equation one, so once we've done this, in equation one, we replace the value of x by six over y. So this is a classic substitution. Six over y plus y is equal to six. Now, in order for you to work with this, we might want to multiply both sides by y. So if we multiply the left by y, we get six plus y squared equals six y. Moving the six y to the left, we get y squared minus six y plus 6 equals 0. And so this is a quadratic equation. It's a second degree equation. And we can see if we can factorize it, see if we can find some solutions. Now thinking about the factors of 6 at the end, uh, we can think that 6 has factors 6 and 1, and 6 plus 1 is equal to 7, so that's no good. Or we can think that we have factors 3 and 2, and 3 plus 2 is equal to 5. So none of these uh, factorizations are going to work. And so when factorizations don't work, typically it's a good idea to use the quadratic formula. So as we write this quadratic equation here, we notice the coefficients. So the coefficient of a, which is in front of y squared, is 1. The coefficient of b, which is in front of y, is negative 6. And the coefficient of c, which is the constant term at the end, is 6. So using the discriminant for quadratics, we find the delta value, which is b squared minus 4ac. And in this case, the delta value is going to be, so b squared is negative 6 in bracket squared minus 4 times the a value, which is 1, times the c value, which is 6. And so negative 6 times negative 6 is going to be positive 36. And minus 4 times 1 times 6 is negative 24. So we find a delta value of 12 here, which would indicate that we have two real solutions. So 12 is positive, and therefore you can conclude that we have two solutions. So we have two solutions, probably in the real numbers. So marking our delta value on the right-hand side here, delta is equal to 12. And so the square root of delta, so the square root of this value, is the square root of 12 which if we simplify is equal to the square root of four times the square root of three. So this is two times the square root of three. So when you wanna solve your formula here, you should say that y1 and y2 are going to be equal to minus b plus or minus the square root of delta divided by two a. And so in our case here, the b value was negative six. So when we do minus b, so we're going to do our two solutions, y1, y2 are going to be equal to minus minus 6. So 6 plus or minus the square root of delta. So we said that was 2 root 3. And all of that divided by 2, which would indicate 3 plus or minus root 3. So these are the y values. So we have one y value, which is 3 minus root 3. And we have one y value, which is 3 plus root 3. Now, let's not forget that x times y is equal to 6. Therefore, if we were to say, uh, if we want to find the x value, we can say that x is equal to 6 divided by y. And so in our case, we can say that x1 is going to be equal to 6 divided by 3 minus root 3. And x2 might be equal to 6 divided by 3 plus root 3. So let's make sure we keep our solutions on the side here. y1 and y2 are equal to 3 minus root 3 and 3 plus root 3. So technically speaking, we're pretty much done here, but it's bad form to leave square roots at the bottom. So it's probably a good idea to rationalize those. And in order to do that, so for the first one, for x1, so x1 is equal to 6 
over 3 minus root 3. You can multiply the top and the bottom by 3 plus root 3. And what this will do is it will create the difference of two squares in your denominator so that you're able to rationalize it. So writing the second solution here, 6 over 3 plus root 3, we can look at rationalizing these denominators. So here is the difference of two squares formula, a plus b factor of a minus b. That will be equal to a squared minus b squared. And we can use this here to multiply, for example, in x1, the bottom 3 minus root 3, we could multiply that by 3 plus root 3. And what that's going to do is create 3 squared minus root 3 squared, which will get rid of the square root at the bottom, which is the irrational term. So let's do that to x1. So x1 is going to be equal to 6 times 3 plus root 3. So we're multiplying the top by 3 plus root 3, and we're multiplying the bottom by 3 plus root 3 as well, which will create 3 squared minus root 3 squared. And so in this case, the top will become 18 minus, or 18 plus 6 root 3, while the bottom becomes 3 squared, so 9 minus root 3 squared, which is 3. And so now you see we don't have a square root at the bottom anymore. So 18 plus 6 root 3 is at the top divided by 6 and if we divide everybody by 6 we get 18 divided by 6 which is 3 and then uh, plus root 3 here. So notice that the x solution 3 minus root 3 leads to the y solution so maybe we call this one y1 3 plus root 3 and so we can write x1 x2 so for the x1 value we just found 3 plus root 3 and we're not too sure what the x2 value is yet. So looking at x2 equals 6 over 3 plus root 3, we can again try and rationalize the denominator. So we're going to multiply top and bottom by 3 minus root 3. So 3 minus root 3 here. And at the bottom, we're going to get 3 plus root 3, factor of 3 minus root 3, which again creates the difference of two squares and will give you 6 um, times 3 minus root 3 divided by... 9 minus 3 and so this will be 6 times 3 minus root 3 divided by 6 which will lead you to 3 minus root 3. 3 minus root 3 is a good answer for this one. 3 minus root 3. And so for this question you end up with the uh, two pairs of solutions here. So realize that x1, 3 plus root 3, will be associated to y1, 3 minus root 3, that is a number pair. And x2, 3 minus root 3, will be associated to y2, which is 3 plus root 3, that's another number pair. And so we have 2 times 2 solutions, or 2 pairs of numbers x, y, which are good for this equation. And as you can see here, if you were to add them together, so if you were to do x plus y, we can check very quickly that this is correct. And if we take the first number pair, we can say... 3 plus root 3 plus 3 minus root 3 and realize that that is indeed 6 and therefore our solution is good. That is because we're comparing this 6 here to this 6 here to say that yes, if you're to plug in x as the first solution and y as the first solution and you add them together, you're left with 6, which is exactly what we wanted from line 1. Thank you for watching the MathMagic channel. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, remember to like and subscribe to the MathMagic channel so we can bring you more solves to equations and you can keep practicing your math. See you on the next one. Bye-bye.